வெல்கம் டு இபிஜி பாட்சாலா ஐ எம் செல்வகுமார் ஃப்ரம் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் மரிடைம் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி அண்ட் மரின் ஆர்கியாலஜி தமிழ் யூனிவர்சிட்டி தஞ்சாவூர் டுடே வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு லுக் இன் டு த ஹிஸ்டாரிக்கல் ஆர்கியாலஜி ஆஃப் இந்தியா த டைட்டில் ஆஃப் த பேப்பர் இஸ் பிரின்சிபல்ஸ் அண்ட் மெத்தட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஆர்கியாலஜி த மாடியூலர்ஸ் ஹிஸ்டாரிக்கல் ஆர்கியாலஜி ஆஃப் இந்தியா the learning objectives of this particular module is to know the definition of historical archaeology to understand the importance of historical archaeology of india to know about the use of archaeology as a complementary source for the historical period and to comprehend the correlations between historical sources and archaeology actually the important role that archaeology has to play in studying the historical period forms part of this particular module introduction let's see what is historical archaeology archaeology is an important source for the prehistoric as well as historical period the temporal units of prehistory and history are divided on the basis of availability of written records when we deal with the historical period it does not mean that there is historical record for everything that happened in history historical records are partial or fragmentary or incomplete in fact for ancient india archaeological record is more in terms of quality and quantity than the written records therefore historical period has lot of archaeological remains that have to be taken into consideration archaeological record can really help understanding and comprehending the processes that were going on during the historical period so we cannot ignore archaeology as a source for history even for the historical period generally there is a tendency that archaeology is useful only for the prehistoric period the main issue is that we have not really utilized the potential of archaeology for the historical period in addition to the uh, contribution of knowledge archaeology is a powerful source in heritage management as a tourism attraction many of the historical monuments can be promoted as tourism destination at least with some kind of sustainability mechanism because we can't directly uh, promote tourism in the vicinity of monuments with too much focus because preservation and conservation of the monuments are very important historical archaeology offers a lot of information that is not available in the literature and written documents in some contexts it may be more reliable and realistic than other historical sources it has the power to represent the history of the people who do not have written documents it adds value to the historical sources especially literature and inscription historical archaeology is just part of history as the use of material culture is integral part of human uh, culture archaeology will be rel- irrelevant only when humans stop using material culture historical archaeology is also source of development and tourism in the public memory uh, historical archaeology is connected with identity as people relate more with historical archaeology than prehistoric archaeology historical archaeology is more related to the people and they treat it as part of their identity therefore historical archaeology has more value apart from knowledge generation it also has lot of relevance and interest in the public realm historical archaeology let us define what is historical archaeology definition is very important in any kind of exercise when we define we can be very precise and confine our scope archaeology can be defined broadly as covering any material cultural representation however 
art, architecture, iconography, numismatics and epigraphy are treated as separate from archaeology in the current scheme of curricula in India. Historical archaeology may be defined as focusing only on archaeological mounds and material cultural remains. Although this definition is narrow, since the paper that we are dealing with is principles and methods of archaeology, we shall focus only on archaeological sites and mounds. Uh, therefore, our, we are uh, confining ourselves to archaeological sites and mounds. Though when we talk about historical archaeology, we cannot ignore coins, art, architecture and sculpture. Generally, uh, as per tradition, we focus only on archaeological mounds when we talk about historical archaeology. Other subjects are dealt with under art history or art, traditional architecture or sculpture or numismatics or epigraphy. So, we will not give much focus to those categories of evidence here. Historical archaeology, disciplinary fragmentation. An important, po important point has to be recognized here. It has to be highlighted because it is very important. Modern or contemporary approaches have fragmented the knowledge. We treat archaeology, history, Indology, literature, language, linguistics, epigraphy, culture, numismatics, architecture, religion and philosophy as distinct branches of study. Past was one and the evidences are in many forms. We need to understand the interrelatedness and the interconnectedness of all these disciplines. Therefore, doing historical archaeology is challenging and complex. A researcher has to consult all branches of knowledge. Therefore, even though we are limiting ourselves to sites and mounds, we cannot ignore other forms of evidences. Only when you look into other forms of evidence, you can interpret the historical archaeology systematically and properly. Historical archaeology and decolonization. This is another important aspect. Colonial archaeology is important since the discipline of archaeology was formulated during the colonial period. The categories constructed during the colonial period have deep impact on the archaeological practices. Often, researchers are carried away by the categories such as Aryan, Dravidian and Civilization. The images that are emerging from Indian archaeology are much more complicated and interesting than these identities. The selective focus on Indus Valley or Civilization or perceived greater traditions seem to have colonial origin. The decolonization of categories is very important for understanding the historical archaeology. Most of the knowledge or the concept related to archaeology that we are using now were constructed during the colonial period. We need to critically look into these categories and decolonize and deconstruct our minds. Only then we can interpret historical archaeology in a better manner. Types of historical archaeology. How can we divide historical archaeology? Historical archaeology is a broad subject. It can be divided into various categories based on time. We have early historical archaeology, medieval archaeology and colonial archaeology dealing with ancient, medieval and modern periods. So these divisions are just arbitrary we can say but we should not think these divisions are very static and fixed. These are the div divisions just for our convenience. Early historic archaeology. The early historic archaeology refers to the archaeology of the early historic period. Archaeology of the early historic period is used more frequently than any other period. In the early historic period the production of textual sources was much. The monuments of the early historic period are also not intact. Hence, early historic archaeology is more frequently used in history. If you look at the archaeological sources from the early historic period to the modern period, we have relatively 
more evidences for early historic period in archaeology and also scholars are using the early historic archaeology more because comparatively we have limited textual or inscriptional sources for the early historic period. When we come to the medieval period, we have plenty of inscription and literature and other forms of writing. As a result, medieval archaeology is not focused much. Medieval archaeology. Medieval archaeology is another important component of historical archaeology. Medieval archaeology used by very limited number of researchers. Apart from buildings, monuments, temples, sculptures and fortification, the mounds and burial sites can shed new light. We have a lot of new kinds of sites for the medieval period that can help us to understand the medieval history better. Many of the medieval sites are still occupied by the people which means people are still living on the medieval sites. We cannot excavate many of these sites. Medieval archaeology can be very useful for understanding the medieval period and its history. It can supplement the historical sources like inscription and literature can be understood better if you look at medieval archaeological remains. The materials can be used to supplement the monuments as exhibitions. Sometimes medieval archaeological materials can be used for creating new museums when we have a monument. We may have a monument in a particular area that may be a tourist attraction. If we excavate, if we find any important antiquities or artifacts, they can be exhibited in the same monument by providing more information to the tourist. Otherwise, some of the monuments are open to the tourist and public and also for school children for education purposes. We don't have many materials. When we excavate a particular site, if we get a lot of artifacts, it can really supplement the monuments. A lot of small, small artifacts and they can reveal about the material culture of the medieval people. And it can also be used for development of the local areas. Sometimes there are so many mounds, they are not being cared for of the medieval period. By excavating these medieval sites, we can really supplement the tourist attraction and the monuments. That is the importance of medieval archaeology. Colonial archaeology, we are in the end of the historical period. Colonial archaeology is also very important. It concerns the remains of the colonial period that is after 16th century. Some of the colonial buildings and cemeteries are still intact. They are found in many parts of India. Colonial archaeology can offer new evidence from the settlements. The colonial sites can provide a lot of new material cultural evidence. Colonial records offer a lot of information on the development practice of archaeology in India. How archaeology developed in the colonial period. Therefore, if you look into the colonial period documents, we can understand better the development of archaeology. Again, colonial archaeology can also support tourism and heritage management initiatives. Now, let's look into the historical archaeology in India and its beginning. Colin Mackenzie had an important role in the documentation of historical remains in India. He was working in Madras Presidency. He collected a lot of uh, information on various historical remains. James Princip, another important scholar who deciphered the Ashokan Brahmi, he also contributed to the development of historical archaeology. Then Alexander Cunningham, the most important figure in archaeology in India in the 19th century, he can be considered as the pioneer of historical archaeology. His work is very important. He identified the sites associated with Xuan Swang and uh, other, um, liter uh, other uh, sites mentioned in the literature. His work is very important. His work on the identification of sites associated with Swan Swang is very significant. He worked at several sites and he helped to identify the Buddhist sites of India. He also excavated several sites including Taxila, Sarnath and Sanchi. His important publication, Ancient Geography of India, 
is very significant it deals with the geographical geographical and cultural landscape of india so his contribution is very significant so this image shows alexander cunningham as and his collections from various historical sites in india next important thing about historical archaeology is literature when we deal with the historical period we have to handle lot of literary sources how can we correlate these archaeological as well as historical sources it's is an important problem literature is an important source of the past but it should be used cautiously as a source for history archaeology has a role to corroborate the references found in the literature literature tend to be poetic and also exaggerate the reality however poetic convention should be used very cautiously for interpreting history archaeology to some extent can help in corroborating literary evidences so this is very important we cannot directly use literary sources in archaeological research we have to be very careful when we correlate archaeological sources as well as literary sources historical archaeological materials are correlated with literary evidences of the historical period in india the vedic texts are correlated with the painted graver culture which is found in northern part of in india all across attempts have been made also to correlate the archaeological sites with the settlements mentioned in the mahabharata and ramayana archaeological correlation with literature is not easy it is very complex sometime it is moving beyond the settlement names is very difficult unless there is proper correlate this is one of the problem when we deal with literature and archaeology however we cannot ignore literature when we deal with the historical period literature oral tradition and also so many other information that are available in the contemporary society can be useful for understanding historical archaeology but as a historian or archaeologist we need to handle them very carefully historical archaeological sites in india across india there exist numerous historical uh, archaeological sites many of these sites are still under contemporary settlements suggesting continuity of occupation all these sites cannot be surveyed here hence a few select sites are presented to understand the usefulness of historical archaeology we will be looking at some of the select important historical sites if you go into the literature you can find a lot of information india is almost filled with numerous thousands and thousands of historical sites we cannot discuss all of them but we will be showing some of the select sites so that you can understand the significance of historical archaeology historical archaeological sites in india we have ahichatra which is one important site ahichatra is in bareilly district of uttar pradesh it was identified by alexander cunningham as ahichatra of ancient literature painted graver was first identified at this site this site was excavated by cunningham and then by kain dikshit a gosh and n r banerji it has evidence from painted graver cultural period to 1100 ce it has also yielded evidence for rampart of painted graver cultural phase this is one important site another important site is hastinapura hastinapura is in meerut district of uttar pradesh on the right bank of the old bed of the river ganga literature and tradition is often associated with mahabharata link Uh, hastinapura as an important uh, site excavation at this site was conducted by bb lal of archaeological survey of india between 1950 and 52 this high site has produced five cultural period period one is ochre colored um, pottery culture then we have evidence up to 15th century it has also produced evidence for painted graver culture so the early period economy was basically agricultural and pastoral in nature we also have found evidence of rice cultivation at this site again evidence of various animals cattle sheep buffalo pig besides horse 
uh, has been found at this site. From the excavation, they have also documented evidence for flood. This is one important historical site of India. This particular image shows the mound at uh, Hastinapura and earlier uh, excavations. Excavations at Pranakila, this is another important site. This is identified with Indraprastha. This excavation is also very important. It has produced several varieties of uh, archaeological materials. Then we have several Buddhist sites in India. They are also very much part of historical archaeology. Archaeological excavations have produced a lot of information on Buddhism. Excavations at Lumbini, Nalanda, Piprava and uh, Buddhist sites at Lalitgiri in Orissa, Naharjuna Gunda and Amaravati in Andhra Pradesh, Sanati in Karnataka have produced lot of evidence. Archaeological excavations have contributed to the understanding of spread, impact and decline of Buddhism. So Buddhism forms an important component when we deal with the early historic period and archaeology offers a lot of valuable source on Buddhism of the early period. We have another important site related to Buddhism. This is at uh, Piprava. It is located very close to the border of Nepal. At this site, they found an uh, important Brahmi inscription on a relic caskets. It is identified with Kapilavastu. Relic caskets were found even at a later phase within a brick-built chamber at this site. This casket is dated to the um, northern black polished ware period. This site has produced evidence for 5th century BC to 3rd century CE. Uh, another important site is uh, Sarnath. This is also a very important site for Buddhism. Sarnath is found near Varanasi. Buddha preached his first sermon at this particular site and Ashoka built a stupa at this site and also he erected an important pillar and with four lions seated back to back which forms the emblem of India. And this site is very important for Buddhism and it acts as a pilgrimage center. This is the, uh, Im, uh, what you see in this image is Amaravati stupa. Actually the materials from this stupa, they are not at this site now. These materials are found in Madras Museum and also in British Museum. This site had a beautiful stupa made of uh, lime, uh, limestone and this is one of the typical Andhra stupa. This is another important site for uh, Buddhism. Uh, in apart from um, northern part of India and southern part of India, various other regions of India have also produced evidence for Buddhism. In Gujarat, at Vadanagar, they have excavated an important Buddhist site. They have found a monastery there. So several sites also exist in uh, Gujarat with relation to Buddhism. You find these Buddhist remains not only in India, also in Southeast Asia. It was a very powerful religion and the influence of Buddhism is seen in many parts of Asia. What you see in this particular image is the uh, excavation uh, from Nagarjuna Gonda. Actually, it is a ghat on the bank of the river that dates to the Ikshvaku period. This uh, site of Nagarjuna Gonda is very important for understanding the history of Ikshvaku. Lot of remains of Ikshvaku period were excavated at this site and this uh, place was earlier known as Vijayapuri it was, it, it, and it was the capital of the Ikshvakus. And this is one important e example for salvage archaeology as well as for historical archaeology. When we compare the written text or other evidences, we have limited information on the Ikshvaku dynasty. Archaeology actually filled the gap on the history of Ikshvaku through the excavation at this site. Several coins are reported from the archaeological context. They cannot be directly used for dating the archaeological sites. Coins have recycle and reuse value. Therefore, people did not intentionally deposit them in archaeological site except in rare cases. Therefore, whatever coins that we are finding in archaeological find sites or layers or laws or by mistake, they have left the coins there. They cannot be directly used for 
rotating because these materials can move up or in different contexts so we have to use them very carefully uh, coming to the um, historical archaeology we have several sites across india as i said earlier we cannot survey everything within the short span of uh, time that we have here so another important site that we see here is tamluk in west bengal it was identified with the ancient post of tamralitta mentioned in literature it was a major port and it was like a gateway to india on in the bay of bengal archaeological survey of india excavated the site in 1954 and 55 it this site has produced evidence from neolithic up to the modern times Fam it is famous for terracotta object apart from other archaeological remains it has also produced some interesting terracotta objects of yakshis which are often find mentioned in the jataka stories what you see here is an interesting terracotta block of an yakshi image from the site of tamluk right now it is in oxford uk so you find similar materials in several sites of bengal they can also help us to understand the historical archaeology now we'll move to sangam literature and archaeology in southern part of india sangam literature is the early tamil literature datable to the early centuries of the common era the literature has very information on various aspects of the society information on culture trade exchange ancient villages and towns are found in this literature archaeology provides opportunity to cross check the information excavations have provided evidence for the activities corresponding to the towns at urayur kaveri pumbuttinam arikamedu kodumanal and kanjipuram so archaeology is very useful in corroborating as well as understanding sangam literature better sangam literature and archaeology what you see in this particular image is a buddha vihara excavated at kaveri pumbuttinam by archaeological survey of india we have references to the buddha vihara existing at kaveri pumbuttinam in the literature this uh, evidence proves that what do you see in this particular image is from the excavation at kodumanal in coimbatore district in tamil nadu here they have found lot of pottery with brahmi and tamil brahmi inscription they are also in prakrit language as well as in tamil language suggesting that traders and several other people assembled in this major industrial center of early historic period what do you see in this particular image is an early tamil brahmi inscription found on a hero stone in tamil nadu so this find was very important it was found by um, tamil university professor rajan and his students and it corroborates some of the references that are found in early tamil literature here we have another site excavated at patanam in kerala this site may be identified with mysteries we have lot of description in the literature indian as well as foreign literature about the ancient town of mysteries but the nobody knew where exactly this site was there earlier people have excavated near kodungallur they found only medieval remains this site is located north of kochi when they excavated they found lot of remains which could correlate this with roman connections so therefore archaeology has lot to do in corroborating and supporting literary evidence this particular image shows the various cultural periods that are represented at the site of patanam again here we see a section of the site at patanam we can see multiple cultural periods they should be treated as a written record see normally in the case of inscriptions and uh, other texts we have written material but in the historical site we have objects and material culture in sedimentary layers that is why scholars call archaeological site as a record it is a record in which words are not there yes there may be words sometime on pottery or other material we have objects embedded in the sedimentary layers that can be interpreted for understanding history this is another site 
called Kiradi near Madurai in Tamil Nadu. Earlier surveys did not produce any evidence for this town of um, Madurai and here we have uh, settlement and other historical evidences datable to the early centuries of the common era correlating with uh, early literature. Another important aspect concerns with the connectivity that India had with Indian Ocean region. This is very important. When we look into the Indian archaeological sites, especially in the whole coastal region, we have a lot of sites that talk about connectivity. We have evidence for Indus Valley civilization having extensive connection with West Asian civilization. Several scholars have researched on this. When we come to the early historic period, say from 5th century BC or even later from 3rd century BC, we have evidence of several ports emerging along the coasts of India, right from Gujarat down to West Bengal. These ports were very important and they also correlate with the early historic dynamics after the Mauryan period. All across India and also in the Indian Ocean region, several ports emerged. Indian people had trade or commercial or other kinds of cultural interactions with people across the Indian Ocean. We find evidence for these interaction in the form of material culture, sometimes pottery, sometimes beads, sometimes coins, not only on the coast of India, but also away in the entire Indian Ocean region. Earlier, scholars were talking about Indo-Roman trade, focusing only on the connectivity between an India and Rome. Now, scholars are talking about Indian Ocean trade, trying to view these interactions from a holistic perspective. Indo-Roman trade is now labeled as Indian Ocean trade or exchange, giving a broader holistic perspective. During the early historic period, India had intensive connections with the regions of the Indian Ocean. The evidence for the connections is found at several sites across India. Roman coins of gold, silver and copper have been found at several sites in India. Imported ceramics such as aretine or terrace gelata, amphora have been found at the sites of Arikamidu, Adahankulam in Tamil Nadu and Patanam in Kerala. Indian roulette ware has been found at several sites from Egypt to Vietnam in the Indian Ocean. What you see in this particular map is probably the earliest representation of India in a map. Here you can see the peninsular India and also Sri Lanka depicted in this particular map called as Pitungarian table. Here you can find different parts of India marked on this particular map. So from the early historic period, we have lot of evidence for the Indian Ocean connection, not only in India, even outside India in the form of Periplus and also the works of Ptolemy. We also have lot of Indian material outside in the Indian Ocean region. What you see in this map is the image of Bernike on the Red Sea coast of Egypt. This is an important site for connections with India in the early historic period. At this site, they have found a pottery with Tamil Brahmi inscription. They also found a pot with 7.5 kilo of pepper, clearly suggesting the connections with the Malabar coast. They also have found this pottery. What you see on the right hand side lower portion is a pottery produced in India. They are typical cooking wares. Earlier scholars were giving focus only to the important attractive ceramics. Sometimes even ordinary shirt can also tell lot of information. Sometimes people carry them as part of their travel they, while, even while cooking on the ship or even after reaching they use this pottery and after their use they abandon them. So these potteries can tell lot of stories in historical relationship. How people were moving and how ceramics were also moving in the uh, ancient period. What do you see in this particular image is the site of Arikamedu, what was known as Indo-Roman port site. This has produced lot of evidence for the 
uh, Indian Ocean and East Asian connections. This particular image shows the distribution of Roman coins, gold and silver and other type of coins across India. They are also important evidence for understanding early historic interactions. What do you see in this particular image is a Dressel 24 amphora. It was an Italian amphora. This complete specimen is not from India. It is just a sample to show the similar type known as Dressel 24 type that is found in several sites. This is another important ceramic. This is a small uh, dish. This was produced mainly in the region of Bengal Delta. Earlier scholars thought it was produced in the region of uh, Mediterranean. But now, based on XRD analysis, Professor Gokte from Tekken College has identified the clay of this particular pottery matching with the clay from the Bay of Bengal region. So, this particular scientific analysis has completely changed our understanding. Earlier, scholars thought that roulette ware was produced somewhere near Arikemedu or away nearby that particular area. This scientific analysis based on the mineral elements really helped to fix the location in Bengal data. You can understand how scientific analysis is very important in interpreting the material. So this can give lot of new information. If you take the case of roulette ware, we don't have any kind of reference to this pottery in any Indian text. But we have this occurring at several sites. They clearly indicate the dietary pattern of the people and also the material production. What do you see in this particular image is amphora handle from the site of Arahankulam. The Roman wine came to India through the ship. So Roman uh, literature talks about this kind of trade in wine as well as traders carrying wine for their own use. So this evidence is also very important. We have references to Roman wine in literature, then you have the actual jars that were used known as amphora that were used for carrying the Roman wine. You find them, you understand their distribution, then we can understand the network. So these kind of complicated information you will not find in any literature. Therefore, archaeology is a very important source for the historical period. What you have here are Roman coins found in an archaeological site at Adhankulam. So they also can tell a lot of story. What you get here is a, a terrace gelata pottery also associated with uh, early trade activities. These potteries were produced in the Roman Empire region. Here you have another interesting pottery showing some images. We do not know what its source uh, is but it is very interesting. You find these kind of small pieces of pottery by analyzing them scientifically we can establish the connectivity. You can now really understand how important even to document a small pottery from a historical site and that may tell lot of information that may not be available in any written text. What you see in this particular image is a sketch of a, a ship that was mainly used in the Mediterranean region. This particular sketch is found on a roulette ware at the site of Adhankulam on the east coast of India. And here in this particular image you see evidence of bead, bead making. Beads were one of the important uh, objects that people used them for ornament in the early historic period. Indians made lot of glass beads. You find these beads in different parts of uh, India as well as Asia and people were producing these beads and they were trading on beads. People were using them as ornaments. The beads also can tell lot of story on India's connectivity. Those, these objects are very small. They have lot of information. That's the power of historical archaeology. India Southeast Asia connections in archaeology as I already mentioned India uh, was connecting with the countries across the Indian Ocean. We have lot of material evidence for this connectivity. 
India's interaction with Southeast Asia is evidenced by art, architecture and sculptures. We will not be dealing with all these material now, but when we take even the material culture, we get a lot of evidence for this. Archaeology offers information on the interaction between India and Southeast Asia. Roulette ware and other early historic Indian ceramics have been found in Thailand, Indonesia and Vietnam. So, they really tell how Indian materials went to different parts of the Indian Ocean region. Medieval Indian ceramics have also been found at a few sites in Southeast Asia and also in West Asia. At the site of Kavsham Kavo in Thailand, they have found evidence for the presence of Indian craftsmen. That means Indian craftsmen also moved and they were producing things in uh, Thailand. So, you get these kind of movements and interactions proved by archaeological research and excavation. Now, we will come to the medieval archaeology. Medieval archaeology is very important, although medieval in some contexts have negative connotation. Medieval archaeology is not given due importance in India. The abundance of literary and epigraphical sources have discouraged people from using archaeological source for medieval history. The abundance of archaeological evidence in India and the focus on the early period has forced archaeologists to focus on the earlier period, not the later period. We have medieval sites, several medieval sites. I am not going to discuss all these sites. I am taking two or three sites here. We have evidence for Chola Palace at uh, Gangikonda Cholabram. This was the capital of the medieval Cholas of South India and it was shifted from Tanjavur to Kangaikonda Chodapuram. Remains of a Choda palace has been found at this site. The abundance of literary and epigraphical sources have discouraged people from using archaeological source for medieval history as I already uh, mentioned. I think we need to focus more on medieval uh, uh, archaeology. What you see in this particular image is the palace excavated at Gangikonda Chodabram. Though we have references, the actual excavations at this site has produced extensive brick structure which, is, which was part of the Choda palace. And this is another site in uh, Karnataka. This is Talakkad, which was the western Ganga capital. Their excavations have produced lot of evidence including architectural remains. Coming to the medieval uh, history, we also have other forms of uh, evidences to understand the history of science and technology. We have evidence of these measurement rods marked on the buildings and walls. These rods are marked as straight lines or as uh, you know distance between two cross lines. Sometimes the space in between are indicated by a vertical line. They help us to understand the type of scales or measurement rods that people used for measuring land. This is an important part of medieval archaeology. What you see in this particular image is an ancient milestone. It was found um, at the site called uh, Motlambati and also they found another stone at a site called Dharmapuri. And by when you look at these stones, you can understand that ancient people planted stones for measuring the distance. In this particular inscription, you can see the reference to a particular highway called Adhiyaman Pervadi and interestingly, they mention the distance. Here the distance is mentioned in letter and also for people who cannot read, they have showed the distance in a traditional measurement by showing two large circles and seven smaller circles. Two large circles each one of the circles represent 10 traditional unit and the smaller circle refers to one small unit. By calculating, people could understand the distance to the destination. Again, these are some of the medieval measurement marks that are found in the temple. They are very useful for understanding the pattern of measurement that were used by the people. Again, we have another um, milestone from the site of Motlampati in the uh, Dharmaburi district. Uh, place names and oral traditions. Place names and oral traditions, they are also very important uh, in historical archaeology. They offer clues to the presence of historical sites. 
Oral traditions can also be useful for historical archaeology. Sometimes they could be useful for understanding the popular perception. But this data should be used with a lot of caution. We cannot directly rely upon. Now we will come to the summary portion of this particular module. Historical archaeology began in India with the contributions of Colin Mackenzie and Alexander Cunningham. Numerous archaeological sites of historical period have been excavated in India. Archaeological excavation at the sites associated with the Ramayana and Mahabharata have produced early archaeological evidence. Archaeological excavations in Indian and the Indian Ocean countries have produced material for the connectivity of India. Excavations at medieval sites have supplemented the evidence from the historical sources. Historical archaeology is a valuable source for reconstructing history. It is a useful tool for corroborating literary and epigraphical sources. It helps to fill the gaps in the information provided in other sources. Archaeology of medieval period is also equally important. Efforts should be made to make use of medieval archaeological remains for the reconstruction of history. Colonial archaeology also offers sublimentary evidence for the modern period. So thank you for listening and I hope I explained many of the points related to historical archaeology in India. If you want more information, please log on to ePartisala website. Thank you.